there's two guys that we need to talk about before we get to going through the whole process of translation. And the two people are um, tRNA molecules and the ribosome. We're going to look at the structure of the ribosome so that we have just some context for the parts that we're going to be talking about when we deal with the actual process of translation. And remember in the last one when I said in the genetic code chat, I said the ribosome uses this genetic code chart to say, hey, the mRNA says ACU. I need someone to bring me a threonine. Guess who does that? Guess who transfers the amino acid to the ribosome? That's tRNA. tRNA is a strand of RNA. And remember how we talked about um, DNA is a double-stranded molecule, but RNA is a single-stranded molecule? Take a look at this mess. What even is that? That's one string of RNA that folds into a certain shape. And this shape has two really, really, really important parts. One part is called, and I just, I'm, oh my gosh. Do you guys know how much I love this stuff? It's so freaking cool. This part, AKA this part in our picture, in our folded weird image of the 3D shape of a tRNA molecule. Did I say that that's transfer RNA? That's what the T stands for. This is called the anti-codon. What? It's three bases and it matches the codon. Okay, look, let's use the mRNA codon ACU. So if the codon is ACU, then tell me what's the anticodon going to be? The anticodon is going to bind to the codon. It's going to match the codon. It's not ACU because that won't match. Who matches to A? Well, in my brain, since we just did DNA replication, I go like, dude, it's T. A's and T's go together. But you know that in RNA, we don't have T's, we have U's. So the anticodon has a U to bind to the A. Who binds with C? G. So the anticodon has a G. And who binds to U? I'd be like, dude, what, U? I don't know, except, oh yeah, U replaces T, which means it must be A. Do you follow how I got that? So my anticodon, in this case, if we were gonna make this the tRNA that carries threonine, its anticodon is gonna be UGA. Now, do not take your anticodon back to this chart to determine what amino acid it's carrying. This chart is for messenger RNA only. Be sure to take the messenger RNA codon back, but what amino acid is this carrying? This is the second important part. There's an amino acid connection. I'm sure this has a better name than amino acid connection zone, but it's at that amino acid connection zone binds to threonine only. It doesn't bind to leucine, it doesn't bind to glycine, it doesn't bind to arginine. It binds to threonine only. And so the anticodon binds to the codon that's coding for threonine. That's how the ribosome gets the correct amino acid that's necessary for this process. Dude, I... Should we just like give kisses and love to our tRNA molecules? 
That's just wild. There are 64 different tRNA molecules. So in this place where we're like, dude, there's four codons that code for threonine, that means there are four possible tRNA molecules out there, all of them holding threonine. And then there's the one that is, there are all the 64 others that are coding for the other amino acids. How do you feel? That was just the first player that we wanted to bring in and talk about before we get into the process of protein synthesis. The second player is the ribosome itself. The ribosome has two subunits and it actually, like I always think of a ribosome as just a tiny little dot in a cell and that's because that's how it's always depicted in pictures of cells. When you learn the ribosome, it's all those little dots in there. They're not hollow, they're just like these solid little dots. Well, they're made of messenger, I mean, of ribosomal RNA. Let's write that down. R-R-N-A is and proteins and some proteins. And they're built, remember? Where are they put together? They're built in the nucleolus. I don't know why I think that's so cool. So the nucleolus that dot inside the nucleus is in there building ribosomes like mad because you need a lot of them. But they have these two subunits and the subunits don't come together until you have a messenger RNA molecule with its five prime cap. The only thing I'm gonna tell you here is that once the ribosome connects, so it has its big subunit and its little subunit and they're connected, the ribosome itself has three binding sites for tRNA molecules. So you have the A site, the P site, and the E site. And I see that this diagram that I've chosen tells you the names of the sites, but I'm gonna tell you the way I remember the A site, P site, and E site. E site is easy and they agree with me. It's the exit site. That's how, like I literally think exit. So that's the last place that the tRNA molecule is gonna be before it bounces. The P site, I think of it as the protein site. This is the place where I'm building my protein. I, in the P site, if everything pauses, I should have a string of amino acids growing. And the A site, I think of it as the amino acid site or the arrival site. So this is the place where the amino acid arrives to the, the next amino acid arrives to the A site. This means that we're actually progressing in this direction. So a tRNA molecule arrives at the A site, moves to the P site, and gets attached to the growing peptide, and then leaves at the E site. How do you feel about that? Pat your ribosomes too. I didn't get as excited about the ribosomes as I did the tRNA molecules, but I am as excited because in the next piece, we get to walk through the whole process of translation.